Hi everyone, today my talk will be about modeling retrofit responses with sealed classes and coroutines. So um, let me introduce myself. My name is Jeong from South Korea, and I'm a GD for Android, and I work as an Android developer advocate at Stream. So um, let's get started. Um, this is, um, let's see, a very typical architecture design in Android development. Um, there are three layers, which are data, domain, and presentation. Today, we will look into the data layer, especially handling network API calls with retrofit. Uh, we can define multiple scenarios from the network API call, and we can classify them into the response and exception. The response scenario represents the API call and successfully received a response from the network, and it can be classified into success or failure. And the exception scenario represents unexpected cases that could happen um, before getting a response from the network, such as IO exception and a non-host exception. So let's see how each scenarios flow in this multi-layer architecture. Uh, first, we need to pass the body data to the presentation layer for configuring UI elements. And we also need to pass the uh, error data to the presentation layer for handling errors and configuring UI elements. And for example, we can display a different placeholder or toast message depending on the error types. And uh, we need to handle exceptions somewhere in this uh, multi-layer architecture because um, API calls may throw an exception and it can be propagated to the call site. So um, yeah, these are typical um, scenarios that we could face in handling API calls. So now let's see an example of calling the retrofit API and handling response. Um, the fat posters function requests a list of posters to the network and the poster remote data source returns a result of the request. And it returns an empty list if the request fails. Um, but you may notice this um, code snippet has some problems in the multi-layer architecture. Firstly, the results are ambiguous on the curl site, which means the batch posters function also could return an empty list if the response body is empty. So the domain and presentation layers can't identify whether the request was successful or not. Um, one of the ideas to improve this is um, wrapping every possible scenarios of the API results with a sealed class. Then we can pass a wrapper class that contains the full context of the API results to the other layers. So by um, passing a wrapper class to the call site, the presentation layer can identify the API results and um, configuring UI elements depending on the response type. So let's um, now construct a seal class, which is composed of three scenarios. The network result dot success and error classes represent an API result that um, received a success or failure response from the network. Um, on the other hand, the network result that um, exception represents an API result that faced an unexpected exception before getting a response from the network, like um, IO exception and unknown host exception. 
Um, if you use Kotlin 1.5 or higher, you can design the wrapper class with a sealed interface. Um, most of implementations are similar to the sealed class, but um, there are some difference between the sealed class and sealed interface. With the sealed interface, um, subclasses don't need to be placed in the same package, which means we can use the class name as it is. Um, we can also extend the subclasses by combining the sealed class. This is um, this example shows how to write um, explicit L classes um, under the error API, API error seal class. And then we can handle each specific errors exhaustively in the when expression. So we looked around each two examples of the seal classes and the sealed interfaces. The sealed class is more restrictive than the sealed interface. And meanwhile, the sealed interface uh, must have public visibilities for each property and functions. So um, they can expose unintended API surfaces. So you can choose which one to use depending on your architecture design. Um, now we need to get a network result from a retrofit response by implementing handle API function. This is an example of the handle API function, which returns a network result from a retrofit response. We will break it down one by one. Uh, firstly, this function receives and an executable lambda function, which returns a retrofit response. After executing the lambda function to get the retrofit response, the handle API function returns network result dot success if um, the response is successful and the body data is not a null value. If the response is a failure, it returns a network result dot success dot error, which contains a status code and error message. We also need to handle um, exceptional cases because um, network requests might um, throw an exception, such as HTTP exception and IO exception. So um, this is a use case of the handle API function in a data layer. The poster remote data source returns a network result by um, executing the handle API function with the fetch posters function. Um, after we get a network result in a view model, we can handle the response exhaustively in the when expression, depending on the response type. We can also handle the error more specifically by um, its status code or error message. So um, now let's see the API data flow in this multi-layer architecture. After wrapping the retrofit response to the network result in a data layer, um, each layer can identify the responses and handle data more obviously. So everything works fine, but um, it would be much better if we could um, improve the wrapping process because we still need to write the handle API function for um, each network request. So how could we improve this process? Um, one of the best ways to improve the wrapping process is building, building a um, retrofit call adapter, which um, allows us to delegate um, API responses 
and we can return a um, preferred type on the retrofit site. To delegate um, retrofit responses, we need to write a custom retrofit call class. The entire code looks um, very complicated, but let's break it down one by one. Um, firstly, we need to extend the retrofit call interface, which um, has the network result as a generic type. And we will delegate API responses to this um, network result call class. Um, let's see the NQ function first. The NQ function sends a request um, asynchronously and notifies the callback of its response. So we should execute the NQ function and delegate its response to the callback of its um, of this network result call class. For getting API responses and delegating it to the callback, we should override on response and on failure functions. On response function um, will be invoked if an um, um, API calls receive a success or failure response from the network. After receiving a retrofit response, we can use the handle API function for getting a um, network result and pass it to the callback. One failure function will be invoked if an error occurred when I'm talking to the server, creating the request, or processing the response. And we can create a network result dot um, exception with a given throwable and pass it to the callback. For other functions, we can just delegate um, API behaviors to the um, network result call class. So we don't need to implement um, further behaviors for these functions. And now let's see how to implement a retrofit call adapter. This is simple. Um, in the adapt function, we can just return an instance of the network result call class, which um, delegates API responses. Now let's see how to implement the retrofit call adapter factory, which um, creates call adapter instances based on the return type of the retrofit service interface methods. Firstly, um, we should check the return type is um, call interface and the generic type is network result class. And return the network result call adapter after um, getting the generic type of the network result class. So um, that's it. So uh, now we can um, use the now we can add the network result call adapter factory to the retrofit builder. And finally, we can return a retrofit car interface, which um, has the network result class as a generic type. If we want to get the response with coroutines, we can use the await function which executes the NQ function internally. We can also make this better with the suspend modifier. If we use the suspend modifier um, in front of the functions in retrofit services, we can just return the network result as a response type. As a result, the data flow will look like this. The retrofit curl adapter um, handles retrofit responses and exceptions. So the responsibility of the data layer has been reduced. Also, each layer can expect the result type of the um, retrofit API call to be network result wrapper class. So 
uh, we can make useful operators such as map, combine, and transformers for the network result. For instance, we can perform a given action on the encapsulated value or exception if an instance of the network result represents its um, dedicated response. So a lambda function will be um, conditionally executed along with the data or exception. Also, these extensions return themselves by using the apply scope function, since the return type is consistent as a network result. So we can use these extensions like um, functional operators by chaining. So this is a use case of the extensions to handle each response type. Um, not only looks much better than the when expression, but also we can continuously combine other operators. Um, here is an example. We can write a map operator for the network result class, and we can transform the return type with this map extension. In this example, the map operator um, transforms a list of posters into a single poster. Then um, in the next um, unsuccess extension, it performs an action on the single poster value. Okay, so um, let's summary on what we can achieve by modeling retrofit responses with um, sealed classes or interfaces. We can encapsulate the raw data and exceptions from the from API calls. Then the domain and presentation layers can handle um, responses clearly because um, they can expect the return type, which comes from the different layers. We can also handle um, errors and exceptions more obviously. So um, this concept is very well known as Monad's functional programming or railway-oriented programming. So if you have more interested, you can um, find out many resources with those keywords. And I would like to introduce other solutions that um, help us to model retrofit responses. Um, one of my open source libraries, Sandwich, is a um, sealed API library for modeling retrofit responses and handling exceptions. It provides a retrofit car adapter by default and um, lots of useful functionalities such as um, operators, global um, response handling, and great compatibility with live data and flow. You can find out um, lots of real-world solutions that um, contain what I mentioned in this talk. Um, if you want to handle more comprehensive um, responses from the network, database, or um, file systems, then you can consider using Kotlin's result class. The result class is included in the Kotlin's standard library by default so you can use the result in your project without further steps. Also, um, Kotlin's standard library provides run catching function, which is um, very useful to handle an exception and returns the result class. So um, you can utilize the result class with your um, custom retrofit call adapter to improve your API response handling. Um, you can also consider using a library um, arrow, which includes the most popular data types, such as option, either, and 
some um, functional operators to empower users to write functional programming. So that's it. Um, here is a summary of the resources that I mentioned in this talk. If you are interested in learning more about this talk, it would be helpful to check out the resources. If you have any questions, um, feedback, or if I was wrong, please feel free to reach out to me via these contacts. So um, thank you so much for your time today. And I am very happy to speak at Android Worldwide. All right, thank you so much, Ji Wong. Looks like my webcam is actually working this time. So that's that's a big win in my books. Yeah. So I will just give a couple of minutes for uh, some questions to pop in here, if anyone has any questions. And uh, yeah, thank you for the wonderful talk. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, um, I particularly uh, found it interesting, like uh, being able to create my own uh, functional operators. Uh, that was kind of a a neat neat feature there. Yeah, um, customizing functional operators um, has a lot of um, benefits to handling your responses and um, data. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like we've got one question here. Um, and I, I personally, I, I don't fully understand what the question is, but maybe uh, you have a clearer picture of what they're asking here. Okay. I'll just uh, pop it up on the stage here. Um, so um, modeling the retrofit response is not um, re-implementing retrofit and Kotlin. Um, instead, we can um, make an adapter which delegate API responses, and we can wrap the entire possible scenarios with the wrapper class, and uh, we can do a um, lot of things with the wrapper class because um, we can expect the result type in other layers, such as um, domain or presentation layers. All right. So it looks like that's it for the questions. Uh, I'd just like to remind everyone that, uh, oh, let me get this uh, question off the stage here. I'd just like to remind everyone that uh, if you'd like to check this talk out uh, in a couple weeks' time, it will be available on the Android Worldwide uh, YouTube channel. And uh, coming up at 9.45 PM Eastern time, uh, so something like 15 minutes from now, uh, we have another a talk coming up, uh, which is going to be on state machines and hopeful dreams. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Thank you so much, uh, Jay Wong, for your talk. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And obviously, we'll have a short little break. And then we'll, we will be back into the last talk for our event. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, thanks, Jay Wong. Bye. See you, everyone.